Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video. And as you can see, we have this massive knife to look at today. This is the Cold Steel 6 inch tie light. This is being lent to me by uh, a fellow knife enthusiast, Mike. And uh, I've got to say a huge thank you for him to to him for lending this out for a little bit. And, and actually, I've got to admit that before this, uh, well, I've had this for a week or so now, but up until now, I've never actually had a chance to handle this knife. Now, uh, because I've only had it for a week, this is not going to be as extensive a review as what I normally do. Uh, I have had to, you know, normally I don't do this. I just carry a knife and use it sort of uh, in a natural way. But this, because I knew I had a limited time with it, I had to, you know, purposely try it in a few different pairs of pants, purposely try and do some cutting with it to see how it performed. And so it's a little bit of a, a different kind of video. Maybe, maybe it'll be better, maybe it'll be worse, I don't know, but we're gonna find out right now as we work our way through this insanely huge cold steel knife. Just to give you a bit of perspective, I'll start with one quick size comparison. Here it is beside a pair of two, okay? So uh, this is a very, very large knife. Now there are a number of variations of this available. Uh, this is the aluminum version. It's in CTSX HP. Uh, that tells me it's a few years old. These days this would be S35VN. Uh, and this, so this is sort of the expensive version of this knife. There's also a budget friendly version of this knife, probably in OS 10 or something like that, and uh, Grivery. There's yet another version that uh, just came out this year that's sort of the, the Lynn Thompson special edition or something like that. Uh, and it's got the, the curved blade. So lots of variations available in this. Uh, there's also a four inch, if you're not into a 13 inch folding knife, there is a, a four inch bladed version available, which is still a large knife, uh, but not, not gonna be quite as substantial as this one. And so now that we've kind of gotten some of the options out of the way, if you're looking at this and thinking, you know, do I, I don't know if I like that particular version, you kind of know what's out there. Let's go ahead and get to a little bit of philosophy, okay? Because this is going to be different than most knives, okay? I didn't try, I get, I tried it for cutting purposes, guys, but I, you know, this is not the kind of knife you're going to use in your kitchen for, you know, cutting up your pork chops or, or slicing an apple for your kids. It's a very abrupt grind. It's fairly thick blade stock. So it's not a, it's not a slicing knife. This really is primarily designed, by the way, it's got a wave feature here that does work very well. Um, this is primarily going to be focused on, you know, some kind of martial role, all right? Yeah, this is this is more of the knife you carry as as a defensive or offensive option, I suppose, more so than say, you know, to open packages and cut down cardboard. It'll do those things, no question, but that's not the design philosophy behind the tie light. Okay, so that that means, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense for me when talking about this blade to compare to complain that it's not that slicey that you know, I may complain, but it won't be for those reasons. Okay, so uh, let's get into the size and weight now. This is a very big knife, 13 inches overall, six inches, wow, six inches on the blade, seven inches on the handle, and it weighs in at a fairly hefty nine ounces. Now, that's not the heaviest knife we've had on the channel. In terms of carry, I've got to say this, okay, when you are carrying this knife, you know it's there because of its just sheer size. Um, you may not have pockets deep enough to accommodate because you need, you know, if this is six inches long, you can see, what is it, half an inch down here, maybe five eighths of an inch down. So you still need pockets that are like five and a half inches deep to accommodate this knife and not all of my pants worked that well. Or I could sort of carry it on an angle and get it to fit in to some things. So this is not super easy to carry, uh, at least for, for me. I suppose there's probably some pants out there that, you know, I just didn't happen to try it in, that it fits fine. But for me, this was a bit of an awkward knife to carry. Uh, but the fact is, if you are in a situation where you need to carry this knife all the time, it's you know, it's because there's some imminent l risk to life and limb. And so you're not really gonna care uh, how comfortable it is, you're carrying this probably as as a necessity, okay? 
And so, well, I will say, of course, a 13 inch folding knife is not that easy to fit in your pocket. I, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone watching. Uh, again, if you really need this, then you need it. So you're not going to care about how, how inconvenient it may be. Okay, let's move on now to the blade after getting that size, weight, and carry discussion out of the way. We will come in with a few more comparisons. You can see really, really interesting, more of a traditional, you know, stiletto style blade. And even the, the overall styling on this is, is very, you know, stiletto-ish. So we've got a spear point blade here. Now this side is not sharpened. Okay, this side is sharpened. Now with that spear point blade, it means we've got a fairly abrupt angle. And that means a couple of things. One, no, it doesn't slice that well, but it's not really meant to slice. I did do some cutting with this and it will cut stuff. Okay, if you're cutting cardboard, if you're cutting uh, opening packages, stuff like that, it can be a little unwieldy. Right, I found myself trying to get up here. You've got so much blade sticking out that if you're trying to do utility cutting tasks with this, and, and especially if you've got to use the tip, you've got to realize that you're like a mile from that tip when you're way down here. So it can be a bit awkward uh, cutting, let's say if you're trying to open clamshell packaging or something, I found myself wanting to cut with this portion of the blade all the time just because of the extra control that that affords. Now, of course, the design of this being sort of a martial blade, that means it, it, it is extremely great for that. This is going to pierce like almost nothing else. It's slim, it's long. The spear point means that you get a lot of material right out to the tip, so it's going to have a very robust tip. The fairly thick grind, although it means it doesn't slice and and cut things as well as maybe some other knives would, it does mean, again, that it's very tough and you're not going to break this in a situation where you're using it to defend your life or someone else's. Okay, so uh, we, we got to kind of keep that in the back of our minds as we work our way through here. Uh, but I, I do like this blade. It's attractive. It's interesting. It's definitely different. Uh, and the, the traditional styling of this knife overall is rather appealing. It's not really my cup of tea in terms of owning one, but I definitely appreciate the, the sort of throwback to some, some older styled knives that, again, were often meant to be a very martial uh, style of knife. Okay, so that's the blade. By the way, CTS XHP is a great steel, one of my favorite steels. Uh, bead blasted finish on this. Again, these days you're going to be looking at probably S35VN for this particular version, the more expensive version. And honestly, guys, I can't remember what the steel is on the, the cheaper versions. I did look it up and it's completely slipped my mind. So, uh, do I like this blade for what it's intended for? Yes, I do very much. Is it a blade that I would be inclined to use and carry? Probably not. But again, if you if this is the blade that you need, all right, then it's very, very purpose driven. OK, now let's go on to the lockup and deployment and the action. And I've got to say that's an aspect of this knife I have enjoyed quite a bit reasonably accessible lock bar. Now, uh, now, first thing, let's point out, this is a cold steel that doesn't have a triad lock. Something is severely wrong just with that picture. But uh, you can see fairly stout, okay, uh, liner there, very short lock bar, which uh, is going to make it quite a bit stronger. And so I guess here's what I would say about this. If cold steel designed a liner lock, this is about what I would expect it to be, okay? Uh, pretty late lockup, very high lock bar tension. So it's a little bit of a chore to push this over. All right. Um, <clears throat> very confidence inspiring, not, uh, not something that, you know, when you lock, when this blade locks up, and by the way, it is very fast. Uh, when this blade locks up, it is rock solid. And it's, you know, it's one of those knives where you definitely feel like whatever I've got to do with this, I'm not worried about it closing on me. Um, the other thing I've got to say is, in addition to the thumb stud working really well, you can do sort of a, a thumb, almost like a front flipper deployment with this. Uh, and this sticking out here is designed to work as a wave feature and it works very, very well. Finally, let me add that in addition to, you know, a knife like this where it's 
very purpose driven, right? Does it need to have the smoothest action imaginable? Well, no, it doesn't, but this one really does. And, uh, you know, I haven't handled a bunch of tie lights, but I've got to say, uh, this is really, really impressive. Now, I don't know if Mike has, you know, taken this apart and lubricated it heavily or water, whether it's just sat in the box. I do know he doesn't carry this one regularly. Um, but I've got to say the smoothness on this is really, really, really nice. Okay, hold on. Now you can see one problem. Left-handed, I do have a hard time with this. It's it's definitely a righty-friendly knife for sure. Uh, but yeah, lock-up and deployment, quite good. Of course, it is strange to handle a cold steel with a liner lock, but this one is about what you'd expect to have in a liner lock from cold steel. Very robust, very heavily built, high lock bar tension, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Last thing we want to talk about is this handle. And this handle, as you can see, is aluminum with steel liners. We've got a single position clip here, not deep carry. Holes here all through the handle, which do actually make it quite grippy. So you really can get a hold of this. You've got tons of real estate miles. So if you need a lot of reach, you know, you've got a ton of reach with this. If you ch kind of choke way back here on it, uh, if you come up here for more precise cutting tasks, that's fine. Uh, it can still do it. And you would have to be like a monster. Like you'd have to have gargantuan hands in order to <laughs> not have this be comfortable and easy to hold on to. All right. And we've often talked about that, you know, you know, we sort of, you know, I've said before that the easiest comparison in terms of thinking of what would be a very comfortable handle, and you see something like this on bushcraft knives, would be a broom handle, just something round and fairly hand filling. And this gets very, very close. It's thick, it's round, it's very hand filling, got a bit of a palm swell here. So in a, in a surprise to no one, this is a very, very comfortable knife. Now, I will say any knife that has sort of a uh, choil here sticking out of the back. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the term for that. Uh, but I, do, I always find it gets in the way. I, I like to put my thumb right about here, but I can. I've got to put it up here. Uh, but anyway, it's there. It does work. And you've got enough handle real estate that it's not that big of a deal. Um, the construction of the handle is very good. It, you know, about what you'd expect from cold steel. Uh, very tough, very durable, very uh, heavily built and confidence inspiring. Uh, we've already talked about it being quite comfortable. There is a lanyard hole back here if you need that kind of thing. And I guess, you know, in the sort of design philosophy of this being being something that's primarily de designed to be a weapon, um, there could be a really good purpose for having a lanyard in case you drop it. So that makes a lot of sense as well. So that pretty much covers all of the aspects of this knife. Uh, my son asked, <laughs> Dad, is that for two hands? And you you really can. Now this one gets a little bit uncomfortable, but you really can fit two hands on this knife, which is a little bit crazy. Okay, now what about comparisons? Well, there's not much out there apart from cold steels that are gonna compare to this. There are obviously some extra large cold steels, the the XL Recon, the XL Espada, uh, thing, the Voyager, uh, Voyager XL, and a few other models that they have. Uh, I think there's even an XL, it'd be discontinued now, but I'm sure you could find one on the secondary. Uh, there'd be an XL Talwar also. Those would be sort of the competitors to this. And I don't have any of those knives. I would say, I would make this one point. Some of those other options would be equally as formidable in a, in a weapon application, but would be able to flex perhaps a little more readily into sort of regular EDC tasks. So if you're looking to only carry one knife, then this may not be the best option because, well, yes, it can, it can be used if highly effectively in, as a weapon, because the blade shape is not ideal for a lot of cutting tasks, you would probably want to carry something else in addition to this to do your regular EDC cutting. Now, where I would be inclined to go with that is to say, well, why don't I pick something else so that I can still have the one tool option? So, you know, an XL Talwar, for example, the Talwar is a great knife that cuts really, really well. It's a very slicey blade profile, actually. So I might be inclined to go that direction or, or an XL Recon or something like that, uh, or even a Voyager 
uh, in, in place of this. However, uh, this does have a special place in that it's very, very unique. It's got a design and a style that's really, really different and interesting. And of course, when it comes to piercing, nothing is going to beat this spear point blade. Let me now, having identified some of the comparable knives, let me bring in a couple of the, the knives that I have. Of course, a lot of these are going to be cold steel. So there is the SR1 Lite Tanto. Uh, what else have we got? Here is the AD10. Um, oh, I should bring in a Formax. I've got two Formaxes here. Uh, this Formax also belongs to Mike, the owner of this tie light. Can I get them all in frame there? There we go. Um, this is the Formax Scout. You uh, recently saw these guys compared to one another, the two different Formaxes there. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, yeah, Recon 1. Make a good comparison. Sorry, I'm a little slow here, guys. I'm actually having to reach. I've had to, in order to get this whole knife in the picture, I've had to put my uh, tripod in a sort of an awkward position. Uh, and then finally, Benchmade Crooked River. So there you go, guys. Those are all of the comparison, comparable knives that I have. I'm not going to go into great detail because most of them are significantly different from the tie light. They're more there in terms of reference to be blades that you know, you've seen before and you have some familiarity with to get you a sense for uh, the size and, and overall feel of this knife. Uh, as I said, the, the real comparison knives would be some of the other XL cold steels that are out there. Overall, interesting design. I love the sort of traditional switchblade-y sort of styling that it has. Uh, love the dagger style. Uh, really, really interesting. Now, again, this is not really a knife for me, uh, but I can absolutely appreciate it. And I have to say a huge thank you to Mike, the owner, for lending this out to me for a little while so I could play with it and uh, kind of get some use on it as well as share it with you guys. There you go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to use those uh, links down below. That's a huge help to the channel. And of course, you know, there's a bit of a discount there, so it helps you too. We'll talk to you soon.